Hello friends and welcome to another session on physics. So guys, we are discussing something called uh, Newton's laws of motion and we had discussed uh, something called fundamental forces that exist in nature. Do you recall? So in the, in the previous slide, we saw fundamental forces, fundamental forces, isn't it? And what all fundamental forces did we discuss guys? We discussed four. One was gravitational, right? Force of gravity so we're just writing gravity then we had electromagnetic force if you recall electromagnetic force is it this is the second type of fundamental force and third type was nuclear force and in nuclear force we had two varieties nuclear strong and what nuclear weak forces right this is what we discussed so far right now the speciality about all these what was the peculiar fact about all of these these are all non-contact forces non-contact what do i mean you don't need to establish a physical contact for the force to influence the object what do i mean again so let's say there is an oh this this is earth our earth and an object is falling under the influence of earth's gravity so when this happens there is no necessity of the earth to be in physical contact with the object to pull it towards itself understood so this is what is called a non-contact force so there is no contact established between the agent of force that is in this case earth and the object which it is pulling towards itself so there is no contact similarly if you have a magnet let's say if you have a horseshoe magnet let me draw it let's say you have a horseshoe magnet very commonly available so this is a horseshoe magnet and there is a iron nail okay so let's say there is a nail something like that and if you place the magnet in closer to the nail there will be the nail is going to get attracted towards the magnet now again if you see you can attract the nail from a distance right so there is no contact again here again no contact is there no contact so when you know these are no contact forces but there are few forces which you'll see you there has to be a physical connect for that force to act upon for example if there is a book lying on the table right so there's a book lying on the table right now if you're studying on a table you can see there's a book lying on the table and you want to move this book from this point to let's say here so in this what will you have to do you'll have to just push this book you know and shift it towards the right for that you need to bring your hand and establish a connect between your hand and the book and push the book uh, you know uh, while you are holding the book right so this is an example of contact forces now there are many contact forces in nature so when you are you know uh, enjoying a ride on the swing or you know when you are moving on a bus on a car when you're riding a bicycle when you're pushing the the pedal all of that is contact there is a contact established and there will be you know there the effort is being transferred to the object to a contact so that's what we are going to study okay now there could be variety of contact forces guys but we are going to restrict only on those forces which we see commonly around us what all are they so we have categorized them as normal now don't think that if there is a normal force there will be an abnormal force no nothing like that there is a normal force why normal because it has some connect uh, in terms of mathematics so in mathematics normal is nothing but perpendicular so if you have a line and if you're drawing a perpendicular onto it then this line is normal on to this line or vice versa right right so one line is normal to the other that's how we are drawing this concept from mathematics so normal means perpendicular just remember that then there is something called friction you all know friction is very common uh, phenomena around us and uh, there's something called viscous force also so friction in fluids so if you're talking about friction force in fluids then we talk about we don't uh, call it friction as such we call it viscous force right viscosity now uh, there is something called tension now this is not related to your exam tension your performance tension and all that no Nothing like that so if you have ever seen a, a suspension bridge right there the cables are holding the bridge uh, you know so that there is a force which the cables are applying on the bridge and that force is called tension you know simply put if you have a object you tie it in a rope and suspend it from ceiling then the 
that the force which this string is applying on the object is called tension right so we are going to discuss about that and then finally there's something called spring force which is very much in you know you also if you if you see uh, a stapler maybe uh, there is a spring in the jotter pen there is a spring uh, in your uh, bicycle there is a spring which uh, absorbs a lot of shock and doesn't you know uh, doesn't let you feel uncomfortable while you are riding a bicycle on a uneven surface so these are the four common forces which we are going to talk about one by one so let's start with normal So what's normal force? As I told you, normal force is nothing but uh, you know some force which is acting perpendicular to some other line or surface, right? So let's say uh, if there is a surface or there is a line and there's a force perpendicular to it, so that that force typically is called normal force, and uh, you know it 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 comes into being because there is physical connect between two objects. Let us study a little bit more closely. Let us say there is a book which is lying on the table so right now when you're studying on a table the laptop is kept on the table the book is kept on the table maybe a water bottle is kept on the table so the question is why is the book kept on the table not falling on the ground so what is stopping it from falling on the ground so let's say you know uh, 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 what is that thing which is stopping it right and uh, you can very easily say that the table is stopping it but then you know looking at a very deeper uh, detail what exactly is happening at the juncture where the book is meeting the table okay so let's focus on this area let's focus on the contact surface between the book and the table so what's happening there if you see if you if you consider the lower surface of the book let us call this as book b and this is tabletop surface t so i have just separated them you know uh, so just to explain what is happening over there so if you see the table top pushes the book upwards and the book is pushing the table downwards right so these are the two forces which are acting here at this and this interface what is happening so this force is the force applied by by table table by table on book on book and the other one is vice versa that is the book is applying the force on the table so these are the nomenclature now the normal force applied by the table on the book doesn't let the book fall so basically if you consider only the book let us say this is the book okay let us say this is the book what all forces are acting on it anyway so one is the force of gravity so there will be some weight of this book which is pulling it downwards but then the the book is not falling down why because the table is countering it by what so the table is applying a force upwards right this is nbt as i have shown so n stands for normal and bt is subscript for book and table so the normal force applied on book by table right that's what is the nomenclature did you understand so basically if you see the two forces here are countering each other and are not letting the book fall right if you remove this table the moment you remove this table what will happen you are removing the normal and the moment you remove the table then this book is going to fall down isn't it this is what is normal so what are the points to be noted please remember these whenever two bodies come in contact they apply normal force on each other right so if there are two you know two hands which are coming in contact a book on the table a cycle on the road a car on the road or a, a, a plate on the dining table whatever so whenever there will be any contact it need not be a vertical contact it can be horizontal contact when you are pushing against pushing someone against the wall or you are hammering anything a nail let's say so whenever two things come in contact there always be a normal force and the other attribute is there will be two normal forces because there are two interface or two objects which are coming in contact let's say i am just showing this so this is one surface this is another surface which are coming in contact so one force is one force is pushing the let's say one force is applying a normal like that and the other for other surface will be applying a force like that right so there will be two normal forces and uh, both will be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and the two forces are being acted upon on two different objects now the normal force 
and typically we only use normal we don't attach the word force with the word normal so we say the normal acts in a direction perpendicular to the surface in contact right so wherever there is a surface in contact then the normal is going to act perpendicular to it always remember this is always true now you can say what uh, what about two rough surfaces let's say there is one surface like that and another one is something like that and they are in contact with each other so let's say this is one contact surface and this is another contact surface so what happens so at each location there will be one normal right so there will you know a very fine or very microscopic view if you take then you will see that there is a you know perpend you know a tangent and on that surface there will be normal acting like that on both sides right so wherever is contact being established so let's say there is this contact so at this location if you magnify it let's say the two surfaces will appear like that and hence the forces will be acting perpendicular to that surface at that small tiny location always perpendicular so hence if you are multiple points of contact happening there will be different different angles in which the normal will be acting and but then always this normal would be perpendicular to the surface in contact okay it will become much clearer in the next slide let's go to the third point the electrostatic force between the nucleus and the electrons at the microscopic level gives gives rise to the normal force so what does it mean let me explain let's say let, let's take let's take uh, two surfaces and i am drawing the microscopic view of the two surface so let's say our surface is something like that one surface is this and this is appearing rough because any surface at a microscopic level will be something like that okay and let's say we have another surface here and the surface is something like that okay and it is this surface the other surface is like that okay now when two surfaces are in contact so there are few contact places what all here one here here and here and i'm just giving you random examples there will be infinitely many point of contact but then just for the sake of simplicity we are doing that and these are empty spaces what are empty spaces guys so there is air let's say this is air they are not in contact so this is air right so this is the practical scenario now what happens is this is such a such a close contact that what will happen is the the electrons will be exchanged at this location okay and these locations so electrons are going to be exchanged what does it mean so electron from one object is going to jump onto the other right and whenever such thing happens so let's say if one atom the electrons are jumping from this atom on one object to another atom on the other object understood so let's say this is the interface which you are talking about the contact but they are so close that electrons revolving here jumps to this point jumps to this point so what will happen there will be a positive charge here and a negative charge here isn't it so that the moment electrons shifts from one one object to the other so it will leave the parent object positive, positively charged why because electrons are negatively charged they will go on to the other side make the other side negatively charged so hence what will happen there is a concentration of negative side negative charge here there is positive charge here and now in we had learned in the previous session that if there is a positive and negative charge they will attract each other isn't it so what happens there is a some kind of attraction at this location is happening similarly some kind of attraction at this location some kind of attraction at this location some kind of attraction at this level okay now these are typically or you can say in chemistry we say these are some temporary bonds which are getting formed and the 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 force acts in along the perpendicular to the surface okay that is how the forces will appear like that like that at different different location let me use the color different color here to show you so let's say this is the force direction here this is the force direction let's say here let's say this is the force direction here this is the force direction like that it will randomly uh, act there now you if you see the if you can you know you can uh, understand by this particular thing that there will be if you add all these forces or add all of them vectorially there will be one component which is perpendicular to the surface as a whole and the other component is going to be along the plane of contact right so this perpendicular con 
force this perpendicular force is called normal so where is this coming from so basically i was trying to explain this that if there is a charge separation because of nearness of two objects so the electrons jump from one to the other there is a temporary you know very weak but there is some force of attraction at those local points and that only leads to something called normal force so if you understand vectors then you know that the resultant of all these forces all these which i have drawn here the resultant of all of them can be shown as two force one towards the perpendicular of the of the plane and another one along the plane so this perpendicular plane thing is called normal and you will later know that this along the surface thing a force is called friction okay so these are the this is the reason so basically electrostatic force of attraction is the reason for normal and friction i hope you understood this part now let us talk a little bit more about types of contact and it will become much clearer to you so you can see there are two spheres here which are in contact just like a billiard or a you know pool table if you see all these spheres are in contact with each other so uh, so this is called spherical point contact so two spheres if you place them side by side then they touch exactly at one point here and here is where they will be you know applying normal onto each other so you can see this is the normal applied to the left one by the right one and the normal here is by the left one on the right sphere right now so uh, these are the normal forces again you can see they are perpendicular to the surface here other thing is called line contact let's say there is a roller there are two cylinders so two cylinders you know if you, if you see here they touch along one line okay so there is one line let me so it's not visible from this angle let's say but i'll try to show you so this line here they would be in contact with either is it so this is line contact similarly a, a cylinder and a plane will have a line contact just like a roller which is now moving on the road so it is always having a line contact and there could be a surface contact for example two books here you can see there is there are two surfaces there are surfaces in contact here so these are called surface contact so what all type of contacts we can have point contact line contact surface contact and everywhere can you you can see this is also perpendicular to the line of contact this is perpendicular is normal is perpendicular to surface of contact so wherever normal is applied it will be perpendicular to the um uh, surface in contact is that okay surface is contact surface in contact line contact or point contact so this is about normal so what is the what what do we what did we learn here we learned that normal forces are one type of contact forces so contact so they are contact forces and we also learned that normal forces act perpendicular to perpendicular to surface in contact and we also learned that normal forces what is the genesis the reason is electro electrostatic force is the reason for normal force to exist and different types of contacts we saw so let's talk about friction in the next session